Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. As you have been, well, a lot of you have been asking, um, I'll be taking a look at the Tier 6 Battlecruiser. That is the premium that's currently in the Blitz Pass, and it's British, and it's the Repulse. Well, because you've been asking, plus, uh, because the Repulse is somewhat of a famous ship. She was built during, well, towards the end of the First World War, really, and missed most of the na major naval battles. But uh, she was somewhat rushed into production uh, by uh, by Sea Lord Fisher, who was somewhat infamous about sacrificing everything for speed. And uh, these things were no exception. So the British had started building a couple of battleships, but uh, just had laid down some material. And he decided he wanted battle cruisers, and he wanted them now. So, uh, well, they used, they reused what they could and built something that had effectively cruiser armor. Initially, he wanted two guns, but in the end, he ended up with six. Uh, sorry, two, two turrets with four guns. So uh, he ended up with six. I think they also had single fire torpedo tubes on these things and basically no armor whatsoever. But they were proper quick. Now, after the experience with battle cruisers during the Battle of Jutland, where uh, several of them exploded rather catastrophically, the British realized that uh, shells dropping from above and going through the paper-thin deck armor and then hit exploding within the magazine were rather unhealthy for, uh, for their ships. So they quickly started patching up the armor on this thing. And this is sort of a, a theme throughout her lifetime. She started out with about 150mm main belt and a little bit of deck plating, but then after Jutland a lot of uh, more deck plating was added. They eventually up-armored her in the interwar period to over 200 millimeters of belt. And they still sort of didn't feel that it wasn't enough, but uh, yeah. So they kept patching armor that they had laying around because the British uh, were somewhat overstretched in terms of naval construction at the time. She is, uh, well, famous, infamous for um, for being part of uh, Force Z, together with uh, the Indomitable, actually, who didn't make it because she ran aground somewhere in the Caribbean first and uh, had, was, was a bit late, uh, and together with the Prince of Wales. And uh, this was a British force that was meant to deter the Japanese of doing Japanese things to the British colonies in, the, in Asia. And the Japanese, well, sort of knew that they were coming, and had been practicing <laughs> so so when they arrived without air cover uh, they uh, they were trying to intercept some landings but were discovered and figured well since we've been spotted the element of surprise is gone so we're going to go back but they were the British were at this point still relatively certain that um, that uh, battleship AA and their escorts could stand up against a concentrated air attack on their own without fighter cover or anything else well, that uh, misconception was dispelled very, very quickly. So even though Repulse was actually uh, able to dodge a lot of torpedoes, uh, eventually the Japanese were cross-dropping, and uh, that was that. And then she got donked by a whole set of torpedoes and uh, very quickly sunk. And that was the end of the Repulse. Actually, the HMAS Vampire was picking up, uh, the original one, was picking up a bunch of survivors from this ship. And uh, yeah, the British learned the hard way that no, uh, a group of uh, surface capital ships cannot stand up against uh, concentrated air attacks. I mean, they did shoot down a bunch of Japanese planes and severely damaged a lot of others. But in the end, uh, it was still the Japanese that triumphed. And um, that was that. So, uh, the repulse in World of Warships. She is classified as uh, a battleship. And that is unusual. Well, sort of. I mean, what do you do with a battle cruiser, right? You can take something like the Alaska um, and classify it as a cruiser, or you can take something like the Hood and classify it as a battleship. The Repulse, in my opinion, is misclassified because it leads you to believe that this is a battleship. It isn't. <laughs> it's a cruiser with big guns, six of them. Uh, and it, it, it looks like a battleship, but it has no armor. And how bad that is, uh, well, let's, ha let's, have, let's have a look at this. Uh, and this is the completely wrong set of comparison that I have for a different video, so I'm actually redo that again. 
So let's compare the repulse to an actual tier 6 battleship, the Warspite. Uh, and for, fun for, um, for funsies, we're also going to include uh, the Hood, which is technically also a battlecruiser. So let's have a look uh, between Repulse and Warspite first and foremost. Uh, the first thing that stands out is that the Repulse gets both um, a engine boost and a rapid reload. And she doesn't get any old rapid reload, she gets a rapid reload too. So 30% reload speed, pretty good. Uh, she does have a decent amount of health. But um, if you look at the uh, Citadel Protection and Damage Reduction, which are probably the stats that are sort of most relevant towards armor protection that we can see here, then, um, yeah, no, this is not a battleship. In fact, we can probably find something that has very similar, very similar values if we look at uh, uh, something at Tier 6. How about this one? Um, if we compare these two... Uh, obviously, very different ships, but uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, you don't have armor. Well, you do, but it's heavy cruiser armor on the repulse. Now let's let's put that back because it's confusing. Otherwise, uh, there we go. So you do have armor, but uh, not a lot of it. And uh, in fact, 150 millimeter armor piercing can do can shred the ship pretty pretty darn quickly which is surprising by the way because if you look at the well, if you look at the model let's see if we can look at that a little closer uh, you, you see that there's a catapult right in the middle here and i think these are there's the hangar underneath yeah that's where the float plane should be there are the cranes for for picking it up picking it up again which means that this is actually the interwar refit of the repulse which should by all intents and purposes have been somewhat up armored but uh, yeah, it doesn't tra directly translate into into um, into th into stats in game. So um, similar health pool to a war spite, but uh, definitely not the, the armor of a war spite. She is, although that has to be said, quick with a 30 knot base speed, and the 10.8 uh, second uh, base turn time is also not terrible. I mean, it's not cruiser standard, but it's not terrible. Doesn't quite have the tight cer turning circle of the war spite though. The guns are technically, for all intents and purposes, identical to the ones you find on the Warspite. Uh, only that they're not, obviously. So uh, we get a longer range and we get better HE. Well, slightly so. Better fire chance, though, but not the same AP values. Uh, she's still not the HE main British battleship that you would find in the tech tree line. Uh, the secondaries are... Well, yes, historically accurate. They did fit her out with 100mm secondaries in casemates, uh, to, or just with gun shields, I think, to deal with uh, torpedo boats, more or less. That was what these things were for. So they have an interesting, actually interestingly long range with 54 kilometers, but they don't do an awful lot of damage. Uh, the AA is uh, absent. <laughs> and... Uh, she did have a fair amount of AA, especially after the refits, but uh, yeah, in-game here, uh, no, you don't. You just don't have. And so you, if you want to recreate the actual end of the repulse, it's relatively easy. Just get under concentrated carrier attack and you'll see that happening very, very quickly. Uh, I, I did mention the Hood as the Tier 7 battlecruiser. And uh, the Hood doesn't have greatest armor in the game either, but <laughs> she does have a bit more than the Repulse. Although that said, the Hood is a Tier 7. So the difference being here that the Hood is, uh, if you look at the stats, very much a long-range ship, right? It's a ship that you, do mo that you use mostly at range um, and uh, deal precise salvos with. The Repulse, yeah, kind of too. So uh, let, let's talk briefly about the things that the Repulse is, is, is not good at. Uh, she can't brawl, uh, un unless it's something, uh, unless it's um, like a cruiser or something. Uh, she's not very good at dealing with destroyers. So well, you can kind of run away and, and, and kite away from destroyers. It's the only thing you can do. But you've got two of your turrets forward and only one turret in the rear. And uh, even though the reload is relatively quick, uh, you just don't have the alpha strike to take on a, like to one shot a half health destroyer when he comes around the corner or something like that. Um, she is n not very good at she, well she can't tank. 
uh, she's she's not very good at playing the battleship role at all uh, out in the open uh, stationary tanking holding a position can't do that in the repulse either she's completely useless against carriers so what is this thing good for then well the thing is good for for one thing she effectively you play this like a heavy cruiser you play her at range uh, most of the time and you use your mobility your mobility and your speed is your is your only defense because you can't rely on your armor you don't have the alpha strike you can't you can't brawl but what you can do is run around the map reposition to where you need it and never sail in a straight line <laughs> And that's sort of how you play battle cruisers, right? I mean, that's what battle cruisers were intended to be. The, the whole concept of a battle cruiser was meant to be a thing that has the firepower to, de to, uh, to deal with a lot of things and the speed to run away from things that it can't deal with, which uh, is a decent amount in game. So uh, it's, it's not straightforward to play because you see, you think it's a battleship, you, th you see it, you, s you try to play like a battleship, doesn't work. Uh, you, you, what the way you play this is like a heavy cruiser and this is reflected in the setup so let's go through that first you do get the choice between the battleship modernization for more hit points um, AA damage huh? and uh, torpedo damage reduction yeah uh, fat lot of good that did her uh, so the choice in my opinion is relatively easy for the elite gun operator here because the base traverse of these guns these are technically the same guns you find on the war sprite uh, is 4.5 degrees per second, which on a heavy cruiser is absolutely dreadful, so you want all the traverse you can get. <laughs> because you are not going to sit still in this thing. Um, what else? Uh, Equipment-wise, I, I do have a main battery mod 1 here, because, uh, yeah, like I said, you want all the turret traverse that you can get, because you need to play with your mobility and play like a cruiser. And I actually have double steering in here. Now, you could argue that you could wanted to go for propulsion, and you could do that. But personally, I prefer the double steering because that actually gets us down to uh, a turn time of 8.6 seconds. So that's the time it takes to get the rudder from one side hard to the other side hard. So uh, it doesn't improve the actual turning circle of this, the ship, which isn't as good as it is on a war sprite, but um, it allows you to change your direction relatively quickly, which is rather important. The main guns, well, six of them, but they do have a base reload of under 17 seconds now, and we do have the Rapid Reload 2 that makes them reload a bit quicker. Other than that, uh, AP is often you, your weapon of choice with these things, I find. And uh, yeah, the secondaries are there. You can kind of use them, but they're more situational. They're, it's just like in the, it's just like in the, uh, in the hood, you don't really use the secondaries very much. But, uh, well, at least the hood has some AA. This thing does not. And, yeah, AA, just forget about it. Surface detection, just forget about it. I have put the historical camo on because the Blitz Pass actually comes with a special camo. Actually, let's have a look at that quickly. I think it's all the way at the end. Yeah, there it is. So, uh, you can make her look... Um, <laughs> you can make her look like My Little Pony. Um... All, all turquoise on the uh, on the on the top and with a little unicorn in the front, and l that'll give you hit points, range, dispersion, and traverse speed, which is good. Uh, the historical camo, which looks less stupid, excuse me. <laughs> okay, I I'll take it back. Maybe some of you like your ship to look like My Little Pony. Who am I to judge taste? Anyway, um, it looks uh, it, it it looks more like a ship. Uh, has uh, hit points, range, dispersion, and torpedo damage reduction, which, as we all know, hasn't really helped anybody. But uh, this is as close as I could get to the fancy camo that you can get for free out of the Blitz Pass. So that's why that's in there. Uh, I have put a level 6 commander in here, which means we're not getting the Master Reloader, because that's, um, that's a level 10 skill, and I don't think everybody who's bought a Blitz Pass and necessarily has a commander laying around doing that thing. Setup-wise, uh, it's not that different. Um, you do want the fire supremacy for an additional rapid reload to get three of them. Uh, I, I do have the exploit weakness because I kind of figured I would mi I might use the HE a bit more uh, and try to set fires, but honestly, mm, I ended up just using the armor piercing because it's it is pretty good. So using the generalist here might not be a bad skill either to use. Uh, you obviously don't need the marksman skill, so fully prepared gives you repair kit cooldown time. And uh, you can go with Extinguisher, you can go with Adrenaline Rush, it's all pretty pretty there. Uh, you, 
uh, I would recommend the engine overload because your speed is your is your friend. And then obviously the master reloader going on. And then I would probably just take the APCS because that's sort of what you want. All right. Uh, one thing that I keep forgetting, um, the battle honors. Obviously this is a... Um, this is a, um, a premium, so there's just free stuff. So you get uh, you get uh, effectively two copper out of this ship. That's what you get. It's a tier six premium, so it's not that much. Right then, um, let's get ourselves into some games. In the first round, it's a Bay of Storms, and we're bottom tier up against Kaga, Nelson, Fuso, Enemy Repulse, Queen Elizabeth, Trento, and the Sims. Only one destroyer. Uh, there's a, obviously um, a fair amount of repulses around. And there's an Ezo on our team as well, so we uh, and and it's a division, so yeah, yeah, definitely some divisions going on here. So let's see what we can do in a bottom tier battle cruiser. So yeah, don't again, don't let the battleship symbol confuse you. This is not a battleship. Play it like a heavy cruiser. You'll be having much more fun in it. Uh, just just don't don't sit still. Don't think you can tank anything, because you can't. <laughs> Uh, right, we're spawning on the left side, so we are on the bottom side of things. I will see where the Kaga goes, because obviously Repulse not having any, any AA is uh, making her somewhat of a prime target for these sort of things, but let's see. Okay, Kaga is kind of coming my way here. What do I have? Nagato. Nagato doesn't have a great amount of AA either. And uh, I don't think Vesteros has much. I can't remember when the Swedish destroyers were starting to have some decent AA, but... Uh, uh, it looks like our carrier at least is paying attention and is setting some sending some fighters in to to support. So let's see let's see where the car uh, where the uh, Kaga is going. Okay, it looks like um, he is going after the destroyer. So there come the drops. Uh, haven't really done a lot, and um, there is the enemy Sims. So shots out at the Sims. I'm not changing to high explosive because I'm not expecting to be able to hit the Sims from here anyway. Uh, and there's an enemy repulse, but right now I'm just using the Nagato as a meat shield. <laughs> Because once again, I don't have any armor, and uh, it looks like the carrier has been trying to kill the um, the Vestros and has rather has rather tragically failed do in doing so. And I'm of course in an insta fire, and enemy repulse is shooting at me as well. But he is doing the cardinal error of thinking that he's in a battleship where he isn't. So I'm switching on the rapid reload, and you can see how the Nagato is just shredding straight through that thing. The Sims is coming somewhat close. Uh, there's also a Nelson over there, that's why I'm not damaconing that fire. So there will be probably be Sims torpedoes, and there are Vestros torpedoes in the water, and I think, yeah, these are the Sims torpedoes, so we're just gonna get go between those. And uh, that Repulse is dead, he's gonna die to Vestros torps, so I don't really need to bother. I might as well shoot at the Sims, and see if I can get uh, just a couple of shots in. Well, no, this is more about luck. But at this point I'm realizing that uh, our team is lemming trained and there's a lone battleship who's, got, who's currently being cargoed on the, on the right flank. So this is where the repulse comes in useful because there's a Nelson, there's a Fuso, there's all kinds of stuff over here but there are um, there's not much on the other side. So I'm switching on the engine boost and as you can see uh, this thing easily does over 34, no 34 knots with the engine boost active. So yeah, uh, enemy team, uh, friendly teams calling out, hey guys, we're gonna need some help here, and I am on my way. So who do we have? We've got, uh, we've got a friendly repulse who looks sort of AFK. I'm not sure, and we've got the Ease over here who's sitting in the center cup playing carrier, uh, which is fair enough. I mean that's what an Ease is for. So uh, we'll help out here, see if we can uh, dispatch off the Trento. Ah, never mind, Ease has taken away the Trem Trento. Friendly repulse. Might be AFK, not sure about that. Uh, and there's a Queen Elizabeth who is now suddenly uh, alone on this flank. And um, this means we can push. So uh, full speed ahead, Queen Elizabeth, if he's firing high explosive, I'm not super afraid of, but I'm still angling more in, uh, yeah, he's firing HE, so shouldn't be too bad. Uh, yeah, he's missed completely, so uh, we'll shoot some of his things off and uh, just generally make his life very uncomfortable because he's realized that he's now under carrier attack and being shot at by uh, by a battleship and by a battle cruiser. So uh, he's not having fun. And that Queen Elizabeth is dead. So now, given that our left flank is still holding and uh, we haven't lost anything, we can now push around here. So line her up. And there's the Kaga, I think. 
And the Kaga has just realized that he is not in a good spot either. But he is spotted by... He's air spotted, I think. And uh, so engine boost up and we're going to take the Kaga under fire. Uh, there are the uh, there are the Kaga's planes coming, but he might be going for the Ease of first. Let's find out. Uh, nice citadel on that thing. Yeah, these are 381 millimeter guns. They are effectively the same guns. Okay, Kaga takes out the Vestros, but uh, uh, he's got other problems now. They are pretty much the same guns you would find on something like the Queen Elizabeth, and yeah, that's what they can do. <laughs> uh, not on the, uh, the Queen Elizabeth, the War Spider. And yeah, Isa is shooting at him, I'm shooting at him, everyone's shooting at him. Uh, we have lost two ships by now, but um, uh, our left flank is still holding. So, uh, yeah, now we're pushing around. And suddenly this looks very different. Now, they, uh, we, we have lost uh, the cruiser and the destroyer on the left flank, so... Uh, we'll just need to dispatch of that Kaga and then we'll go into the cup, actually. Come on, there we go. Uh, Kaga dead. Uh, Isa is still taking a beating from him. But um, uh, we're calling out the cap and I am wholeheartedly agreeing. So, you see, this is the thing you can do with a tier 6 battleship, a battle cruiser, that can do over 34 knots. <laughs> you can be where you need it. Right? If you don't have the ability to tank anything. But uh, it turns out the, uh, the friendly repulse was not AFK. So, he's actually uh, coming with. So, which is nice. Uh, yeah, so they just have to defend at home, and uh, yeah, this is two ships left, so they've got nothing at, uh, at this point. They might get another kill, but uh, we are probably going to cap them out at this point. Now, uh, I'm tr I am rushing ahead here because I've got more health than the Nagato, so this uh, Nagato, the Isa. So at this point, I could actually trade uh, if, he, if the Nelson decides he wanna shoot, wants to shoot at me. But uh, we're just trying to save our Isa. Isa uh, takes him out. Okay, nice. So, nice so that's that. Well done. Good job. Uh, Destroyer hasn't managed to do anything, and we just need to sit in here and and cut. And yeah, look at that. I mean, we've done 67,000 points of damage in a tier 6 battle cruiser with six guns only. You'd, you'd think that's uh, that'd be a lot. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a bad number for a tier 6 battleship, right? So uh, as long as you play this thing to, to, to her strength, you really don't have uh, don't have too much to uh, to worry about, and just don't try to tank anything because you just don't have the armor for it. Hell, French battleships can penetrate this thing, <laughs> and the Isa takes the MVP. Well done in the Isa. Uh, so yeah, French battleships can can absolutely wreck this thing, uh, and like I said, even cruiser armor piercing is doing a lot of damage. So you got to be very very conservative with your health and not try to be a battleship because you're not. You're a battle cruiser. So where did we come in the team? Yeah, I've got three citadels against the Kaga, and we came second in the team. Not, uh, not terrible. Let's try that again. In the second game, uh, it's a five v five. I don't. I'm not counting the bots actually. Yeah, two bots each. So we're up against uh, Ryujo, Bayan, Fuso, Budioni, and an Akan, and it's epicenter. So this is the other thing, right? In a traditional battleship, like, let's say you're in a New Mexico and it's epicenter. You're going to need three, four minutes in until you're actually inside the capture circles because <laughs> these things only do 21 knots. Uh, this, this thing with the engine boost up does 35 almost or 34 and a cookie. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can do things in this that you can't do in in most tier six battleships is what I'm saying. All right, so where we're we gonna head into the capture circles, of course. But uh, remember, we are a cruiser. We are not a battleship. So it's not that we're gonna be sitting somewhere tanking. We're gonna be um, we're gonna stay mobile and we're gonna be using our speed as much as we can and uh, try not to give broadside to anybody. <laughs> so engine boost up, 34 knots go. Uh, there comes the Ryujo. So let's see if he's, he's going to focus on me. And we'll have to do the repulse dodging operation. Uh, you, you can usually tell if the first planes are dropping on. Yeah, so the dive bombers are coming in, are coming my way. And that did nothing. Uh, oh, we shot one down. Not bad, not bad. That did nothing. And that torpedo drop is dreadful, so he's not going to hit me. And that's, yeah, he, I, I am way faster than that. He might have expected me to be a lot slower. Uh, there's the Budioni, obviously primary target. Budioni notices that he has been noticed, goes undetected. Is he going to open up? I'm just going to throw some shells that way. Uh, that's a bot, so I don't care about it. Uh, yep, yeah, got two hits in, one overpin. 
But yeah, Budioni has realized that I'm here and is starting to HE spam me bow in, so there's no way. Uh, because the, as you can see, the dispersion can be a bit funky. <laughs> And you don't have something like the precise aim uh, that you could do something with. So there's not an awful lot I'm going to be able to do. Anshan, you you don't want to go there. There's a Budioni there. Now I'm going to start shooting at the Fuso. And Fuso is a bigger problem because uh, Fuso is hitting, is, is hurting. <laughs> not as bad as a Nagato, but uh, enough to deal. And yeah, there the Repulsus guns are starting to feel a little bit um, underwhelming at these ranges. So you're not going to do an awful lot. It's it's not terrible, but uh, I would still probably stick with the um, uh, with the, the armor piercing. But you could, in situations like this, also use the high explosive, and you'd be fine. Okay, we are not. Nobody's going to go for the center cup. So obviously, I'll fire up the engines, and full speed ahead. Now, one thing, one advantage you have as well, is that uh, most people probably don't know how fast this thing is quite yet, and. Um, I, I know I am giving broadside to the Fuso, but I'm banking on the fact that I am going to be a hell of a lot. And you see the Budioni shots are falling short, so uh, he he, di he didn't uh, he didn't realize how fast I am either. So you can get it with get away with this like once or twice. Now the Budioni has the range and setting me on fire, of course, immediately. Uh, there's a Bayan, uh, but I don't think he's looking my way. So I mean, when I said you you can't brawl, obviously you can if someone's not paying any attention and it's just sitting there and letting you do it, then that's okay. And then you can do that <laughs> to a Bayern, and you can even use the puny secondaries that you've got. But you don't want to. You don't want to be around when the Bayern re realizes that you're here. So uh, we'll we'll bother. We'll, we'll we'll bugger off, and keep moving. Don't sit still. Uh, can I lob this? Yeah, let's find out. Can I? Well, I can lob the forward guns. Uh, the bot Fuso is about to die, and that all missed. <laughs> Okay, Fuso dead. Uh, Bayern uh, realized the error of his ways, so Fast rapid reload up, and he's going to dodge those torpedoes. But uh, he is perma flooding by the looks of it, and the carrier is doing um, the Lord's work as well there, and setting the Bayern on fire. Uh, that means now he Damocons, okay. So he has been waiting for that, and you see sometimes see, the dispersion is brilliant. <laughs> sometimes it's all over the place, you really don't know. But uh, you always want to make sure, okay, Bayern is dead, you always want to make sure that uh, the enemy team has somebody, has had a better target than you. So, for example, that Aka over there, he he might be dropping tops my way. Uh, so I am switching, uh, I'm thinking of switching and just doing some shots at this thing and now slowing down just in case, uh, just in case he has dropped tops in my direction. But he seems to be focused on the, um, on the Anshan, on our team, so um, maybe not. Okay, and I've the, I've got the AG loaded, so it's got shots out. And uh, two shots, not bad. And we shot one of his torpedo tubes off, so now we're going forward again just in case. Uh, and yeah, he's he's buggered off. Okay, uh, we're equal on we're equal on on kills, and we are uh, we have a very very slim points margin because we're holding the outer rings. But uh, I th I am thinking of once again making my move into the center ring. And uh, yeah. I am back to the armor piercing, but at this range, this might actually work. It's a relatively low health Aka, so shots out. If we hit anything, uh, we might get we might get a full pen or so. Nah, they've all missed again. Uh, we do have the Budioni who's still alive and the Fuso. So I'm seeing that my friendly destroyer is going into the uh, is going into the capture circle. So I don't need to do that because he is already capping the center. But I'll try to um, to deal with the Budioni. Because this is one of the few things that I can actually brawl if I have to. But Fuso is dead. Oh, Fuso shooting at me. Turn, 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 turn. Ow. <laughs> yeah, that's happening when you when a Fuso starts unloading at you. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, our destroyer has abandoned uh, capturing the center cup, which is unfortunate. Uh, there's still Ryujo. Let's see if we can distract him a little bit. Because once again, the Budioni is, is smart and is not giving me broadside. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if that destroyer is chasing me. But um, please go capture the center area. Uh, we are ahead on points, but not by a huge margin. I am trying to distract these guys here. Okay, Budioni is still shooting at me from the far. Uh, Ryujo is shooting at me, and I do have to turn away now, just in case there are there are torps. Um, how did our battleship get there? <laughs> he sailed the whole way around. Yeah, there come the Aka torps. Okay, I knew that was happening. Um, and I, yeah, I am trying to get the Ryujo just because, uh, just for the points, because uh, killing the carrier will give us a lot of points. So uh, and that's all I'm trying to do here. And the Anshan has the cap under control. The enemy destroyer is buggering off, 
and um, so we can now deal uh, just deal the death blow to that Ryujo there and the Fuso actually takes him out okay so that was a friendly Fuso who's been going all the way around the map <laughs> to kill the carrier this is normally something destroyers do but uh, anyway okay that Akka is now so low that the Fuso can probably yeah he's killing him with secondaries uh, Bujoni, the Bujoni has played a decent game, I find. Uh, he's doing, he's doing the right thing. It's just um, he's in a Bujoni, and his team hasn't really been helping him. Uh, so now he isn't looking, and he's shooting at the Fuso. And uh, let's see if we can punish him a little bit for that. Well, I bounced one of the Bujoni. Happens, happens to the best of us. But yeah, he's the last one alive, and we're so far ahead on points that it's not going to make a difference anymore. And it was a nice blap from the Fuso. He's probably given up at this point. And uh, can I still get him? No, I cannot get him anymore. Oh, and he would have survived on like 100 hit points or something. But yeah, once again, um, this is how you play the repulse. You play this thing like a cruiser, like a heavy cruiser, like a very fast heavy cruiser. Mostly try to keep your range. Don't try to get into close range engagements. Don't sit still. Don't try to tank. Um, you, in a pinch, you might be able to use an island. And, and, you know, like do that sort of positioning, but in, it's mid-tier, so most of the time you're better off just uh, sailing around and uh, uh, unloading at people, really. So, um, is, this, is, this a, is this a good ship? Yeah, this is a fun ship, honestly. Uh, once you play her to her strength. If you get focused in this thing, uh, and you have to run. There's absolutely nothing you can do if you get focused. If you, uh, yeah, if the enemy team knows what they're doing and uh, you get shot at even by bottom tier battleships, uh, even by light cruisers, they can melt you down very, very quickly. So as long as you're aware of these things, you're not going to dominate every single game in it. There are games where you're going to be, um, you know, you're just going to be shut down very, very quickly. And that's that. Uh, don't try to brawl anything. Even French battleships. I've lost brawls with the Normandy in this thing. <laughs> so just don't. <laughs> Uh, but uh, if if she works and you can you know you got the map awareness and you can play her to her strength then this is definitely this can be a very fun ship to play so that's that and uh, that's it for today thanks everybody and i'll see you next time bye bye